Hey, welcome back to the shop, friends. As promised, we're going to sharpen the Bailey number five today, and I've got a quick tip that I think will really speed along the process for you. You probably haven't seen this used in very many videos, and the reason I haven't really used it much is I've never truly got it sharp. Hopefully you can see, but there's a shiny spot in the middle of the plane iron. And what that means is that when I'm trying to sharpen the back, there is a hump in the middle. And that's preventing me from getting all the way to the edge and getting that edge perfectly flat. I could probably spend days trying to flatten this iron um, and all I would really do is take away a lot of material that's actually unnecessary. I'm gonna run it across the extra coarse diamond stone just for a minute, and then we'll take another look at the back and see how much work it would really take to flatten the back. I'm just gonna go ahead and count to 100, 100 strokes on the extra coarse diamond stone, and then we'll take a look at it. So after 100 strokes on the extra coarse diamond stone, I'll show you the area that I'm actually taking material off of. So that's the high spot in the back of the plane iron. I'm not actually hitting any of this area at all. And the most important part is the edge. So if this sharpening stuff is sort of new to you, I can tell you that you don't have to overcomplicate it. Don't get so worried about the angle of the bevel, but there's two things you need to consider, and that's what I'm gonna show you now. What you need to know about sharpening, whether it be a plain iron or a chisel iron, is there's two planes that have to intersect. You gotta have the back of the plain iron, and you gotta have the bevel. If these two lines do not intersect at the very tip, it will not be sharp. So what my problem is when looking at the back of my iron is that there's a high spot in the middle. And I'm having to take that high spot down in order to get to the edges of the iron. So there is a trick that you can use to simplify this a little bit. And what we can do is if this is, of course it's an exaggerated size, looking at the side of the iron, we've got the bevel here, and we got the back here. What we're really interested in is making these two lines intersect here and here so we get a perfect point. Well, if we tilt up the plane iron just slightly in the back, it's gonna make it's gonna, it's gonna elevate the back of the iron at an angle, and that's gonna allow us to hit this edge. Hit this edge with the diamond stone. This is certainly not my technique, but what you do is you lay something on the side of your stone, or if you don't have a set of stones, you could certainly use sandpaper on a uh, piece of thick glass or a piece of granite or marble, and I'll link in the description to a video I made about doing that. But um, you lay something very thin on the edge of your stone, and for this example, I'm just using a really thin ruler. And I'm gonna hold that there, and then I'm gonna actually slide my, my plane iron across that, and that's gonna give us that slight bevel that I was describing a minute ago. You can see the end of the iron we haven't been getting to with the stone. So now, so now sitting the iron at that slight angle is gonna allow us to hit the very end of the iron, the back of the iron. It's gonna put a very, very subtle back bevel on the iron. That was probably about 100 strokes on the extra coarse stone. And now, now we're looking at the back still, the back of the flat part of the plane iron. You can see that I'm making, you can see that I'm cutting right along the edge, right there. And I've actually 
I've touched the, the iron all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and go through all my stones. I've got the extra coarse, coarse, fine, extra fine, and then I also have this drop. So I'm going to just move the ruler over to the next grit. And it actually it doesn't slide very much because the, the stone is, is it's got so much um, texture to it. So it's pretty easy just to walk right over. Just walk right over and, and start to uh, and start flattening the back again. I can tell you holding the iron like this is a little bit awkward. It's easier for me to flatten the whole back as far as the ergonomics go, but this is gonna be so much faster than trying to flatten the whole back of this iron. So now you can see I've actually touched the iron all the way across along the edge. And that's all that's really going to matter to get that razor sharp edge. So now that we've got the back flat, or at least the end of the iron flat, now we can start working on the bevel. And the bevel for this plain iron is actually in really good shape. It doesn't have any nicks or anything in it. I'm just going to have to just touch it up a little bit. The reason it was never very sharp is because the back, I never had the back flat and those two, those two planes never truly met. So I'm using a Veritas honing guide. You certainly don't have to have a honing guide, but it makes it a lot easier to reproduce the same bevel over and over again. This honing guide actually has its, has its problems. And I'm not going to tell you to go buy this one because I think if I had it to do over again, I'd probably get a different one. I think there's actually a new generation of this, this uh, honing guide out that has a lot better reviews. This is an old one. But I made this little jig, um, I think it was last year, to help me line up the honing guide to the iron. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna, make, I'm gonna work on this bevel uh, to 30 degrees. So the idea with the jig is it helps you line it up with the, you press the, the honing guide up against the, the jig and then you press the iron up against your stop blocks and then tighten it down and that gives you the proper um, length you need on the jig to get the angle. A lot of people don't use a honing guide and that's fine. If you, if you can reproduce that bevel without a honing guide, more power to you. I just haven't had that much success. So now that we got the honing guide set up, it's just a matter of taking it through the paces for each one of the stones. I like to do about a hundred, a hundred strokes on each stone. So we're looking at the bevel after a hundred strokes on the extra coarse stone. You can see what we've created is a micro bevel, meaning there's a different angle that we've just created than the actual uh, original bevel that was there. As long as that bevel meets the plane of that other, of the other micro bevel we created on the back, you're going to have a sharp iron. Now, if you really want the whole bevel to be the same angle as that micro bevel, you certainly can do that, but it's not necessary to have a sharp iron. So I'm going to go ahead and just go through all the different stones a hundred times um, with the micro bevel that I've created and then we'll take a look and see how sharp our iron is. So that was a hundred strokes on all four stones and now I'm just going to strop it and um, that helps put a polish on the iron and then we can uh, test it out and see how sharp it is. Don't be afraid to push down firmly when you're stropping. That's what drives that compound against your iron and gets it nice and polished. So let's see how well we did by putting a micro bevel on each side of the iron. Now, if I had an iron that was perfectly flat on the back, then you wouldn't need to go through that step of lifting it up a little bit 
on the ruler. But for an iron like this one, that would have taken forever to flatten. This is a, a pretty good method of doing that. So just about 10 minutes of sharpening, and now we have a nice, a nice and sharp iron. So there's one thing left to do. You need to make sure your chip breaker has a flat edge on it as well because that edge is going to be supporting the edge of the plain iron. So I basically just take it and lay it down on my stone and just, uh, and just try to flatten it a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you want it to touch the iron all the way down to give it support, to give that edge support. Now you can see that it's got a nice clean edge all the way across. That way the whole chip breaker will be touching a portion of the plain iron. So in case you missed it, I have a video here that I showed how I use sandpaper in a piece of granite to sharpen my uh, chisels and plain irons. And that's certainly an economical way to get by without having to buy the diamond stones, which is a bit of an investment. Now next time we're going to go ahead and set up the uh, number five plane. I'll show you how I set it up to get really thin shavings. Now I certainly don't know everything about this um, as I'm a hobbyist. But uh, I think, uh, you know, I've been fairly successful um, through the, the projects that I've built with hand tools getting some sharp iron. So anyhow, um, I'll show you how to do that next time. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. I'll see you over there.